hello welcome back to my channel and again if you are new welcome <clears throat> all right today i'm going to continue reading from a document titled the pyramid code there are a few other videos available already i have the them in the consciousness beyond 3d playlist and i will also create a playlist uh, i'll do that there will be a playlist titled the pyramid code um so the videos are in that playlist as well. All right, let's continue with this document. Amram, my father, my guide, and my rabbi, Rabbi A.A. Aliazer Alfrandi, in my current reincarnation, came to this world in his first incarnation <clears throat> as the third son of Adam and Eve. His name was Shet. He was born on the 10th of Tishrei in the year 130. 3630 BC according to the Gregorian calendar <clears throat> and lived 912 years. He lived several parallel lives as well. Overall he lived <clears throat> 1010 reincarnations until January 28, 2014, the 27th of Shvat and the year 5774 according to the Hebrew calendar. On that day he did not reincarnate it reincarnate. Instead, he moved towards his final destiny, and he is currently in the Pyramid Star. My father, my teacher, <clears throat> my rabbi was born and reborn, but never died. He simply lived parallel lives and moved between different reincarnations. <clears throat> For example, the reincarnation of Shet of 912 years, the reincarnation of Amram of 180 years, the reincarnation as Rabbi AA of 424 years. I mentioned <clears throat> reincarnation uh, in regards to the genealogy listed in the Bible and the meaning of that and uh, the reincarnation of the soul and death um, as the final awakening and ascension um, from this physical body in uh, a couple of the previous videos. I touch on it briefly. Um, as I read this document, and as I've mentioned before, correlate it with what Neville Goddard speaks about um, based on his experiences, uh, his mystical experiences, and then his understanding of the Bible. Adam, so um, this gentleman states that his first incarnation as the third son of Adam and Eve. So those of you familiar with Neville's teachings will know that Adam actually is a personification of man and the state of sleep the unawakened man and eve is simply the creative aspect of man now how do you take that teaching right that perspective and correlate it with what is told here and take the two different perspectives and make any sense of it i can't answer that for you you will have to take what resonates with you, okay? And draw your own conclusions. I have my own and I'm still, there's still some things I'm working out within myself now that I have found additional teachings. And just so you know, I also, I read scripture. Um, I have videos on scripture where I break down the symbolism based on my understanding, any revelation that comes to me. <clears throat> so I've read, uh, the Torah and the Zohar, their symbolism that um, that I understand now that I didn't several years ago. So I'm on my journey as well. So I'm still taking information, uh, taking what resonates with me and uh, just looking at it and trying to observe and not, and trying to understand it, but also allow that revelation to come in um, to help understand it further. So I just wanted to mention that. All right, now some of his reincarnations are somewhat documented in the stories of the Old Testament. He experienced 1,010 reincarnations in 5,644 years with parallel lives, sometimes experiencing different reincarnations simultaneously. Rabbi A.A.'s last reincarnation was here on earth, which started on the 18th of Tammuz in the year 5,350 according to the Hebrew calendar, 
15, uh, 1590 according to the Gregorian calendar. He was born in a little village in Iraq, not far from Baghdad, which was called Kanif at the time. The holy rabbi left to the pyramid star at the age of 424 years old on January 28, 2014. According to the Gregorian calendar, he left from the same field in New Jersey that he and I used to fly in and out using different UFOs and their occupants during our work together. He spoke eight languages fluently. He could also speak with animals and aliens. He knew Safat Har Haruak, which is translated from Hebrew as a language of the spirit world. He also knew Aramaic. The fact that Rabbi A.A. had the knowledge of these languages only offers a mere glimpse of the true power and consciousness that Rabbi A.A. possessed. <clears throat> All right. I think I need to make a note on something. So what happens a lot of times as I'm reading information, just as I read Neville Goddard's lectures here on my channel, information starts to come through. And um, as I was reading this part, this part about the Gregorian calendar, I was just reminded um, of how my the I love the Gregorian chant. Um, <clears throat> there were some things that came to me the other night, and I'm going to have to remember to make some notes. But um, I'm realizing now, <clears throat> just like the Gregorian calendar, as I'm reminded about the Gregorian chant and how that really resonated with me as I was taking classes. Uh, on uh, well, I forget what the class was but I was studying like Greek art and stuff like that <clears throat> and that really resonated with me so the other night I don't want to get too far off of the, this but this is how it works sometimes as you awaken right you'll start to remember things I remember the other day there was, I had a past life vision, <clears throat> being an old man, um, because I was, I was asking about my hip, why I experienced pain in my right hip, and this flashback came, uh, this vision of our previous life as an old man who had trouble walking and was trampled, um, and then the other night as I was meditating, this vision, I forget, there was something from a movie where there was this old, it was an animated movie, but there was an old man in it. Um, and I knew in that instance, I was like, we encounter things in this life that show us remnants of previous lives that we're not always aware of it. So anyway, all right, I don't wanna to get too far off the subject. I mean, I'm going to have to make some notes, but that, again, that's what happens. We begin to awaken. You start to remember and become more aware, and it is absolutely incredible. I mean, it's truly beautiful when you can just observe and and you finally realize what's happening, and then you, it's like, okay, you can start putting these pieces together. It's pretty incredible. All right, so um, Looking back at it, I realized that he was the architect of my life story, and he was also the architect of the history of the Jewish people, and probably other nations as well. He is a special soul who was chosen carefully for divine work. He was present in all 69 of my reincarnations, even when I reincarnated as an animal, an alligator, and not a human being. For those who are wondering, Yes, I have been part of the reptilian family before. No, I am not part of the reptilian family now. No, I do not have the ability to shapeshift. And yes, I have seen, experienced, and worked with people who have the ability to shapeshift. <clears throat> Ever since my last meeting with Rabbi AA, something happened that brought me to a new level of consciousness. This new level of consciousness and awareness has given me different understandings and insights that help me reflect on my past, including different reincarnations that sharpen my memory and cause me to remember different reincarnations in more detail. For example, in one of my reincarnations, I was an eagle ruled by a shamanic Indian in North America. The shamanic Indian is present-day orly in my current reincarnation. 
All my other friends, acquaintances, and loved ones from the year 2448, according to the Hebrew calendar, <clears throat> 1312 BC, according to the Gregorian calendar, were also part of that reincarnation in the form of different animals, such as a snake, which is Tina, a bear, which is Vicky, a hawk, which is Miriam, black and white cat, Toba, horse, Jason, the wolf, Ramy, female wolf, Shula, a buffalo, Rachel, black and white dog, Abraham, and more. All the animals were controlled by the Indian shaman <clears throat> who used animal and plants for treatments and healing. A significant part of the treatment was performed with the use of psychedelic mushrooms, the psilocybin, for different healing purposes. The shaman's use of uh, psilocybin on humans and animals gave them the spiritual power to control both animals and humans. <clears throat> In order to strengthen himself and his power over man, animal and beast, he made sure that the psilocybin would be part of their daily diet in very small quantities. He would administer higher quantities of psilocybin when they were sick in order to heal them and even save their lives. The Indian shaman was known as Ram from the Metis tribe who had been wandering around the Canadian and U.S. border for centuries. <clears throat> Ram was a strong, tough, high-blooded, bloodthirsty man with no compassion for those around him. He was also the chief shaman of his tribe and the ruler of the tribe. He ruled his tribe and animals with a strong and powerful hand. It would be interesting to understand why this reincarnation comes back to me again and again. All right, so I'm going to finish. So that is uh, where I'm going to stop today uh, as a new section begins. A couple more things that came to me. Uh, so... In meditation, <clears throat> I did have a vision of one of my past lives, which I, which surprised me, but uh, I saw myself as a dinosaur and a triceratops specifically. And this is what I was kind of touching on before, where we come back to this remembrance and then we realize things within our current life which are resonated with us and now you start to piece together the puzzle and go, oh, that's where I resonated. Whenever it has come to dinosaurs, whenever I've seen movies with dinosaurs in it or, you know, watch, uh, you know, the animated shows with my kids or read books or whatever, the Triceratops was, the, was always my favorite dinosaur. So I had this vision a couple days ago and in this vision, I, meditation I had this vision uh, of a there were a couple past lives that were revealed to me I think I've got five or seven so far um, but I was a dinosaur I'll sh and I'll share this when I uh, when I um, go through my notes and uh, I'll create a dream a mystical dreams video on it um, at a future date but yeah I was a triceratops but then I had the remembrance I was like Oh, that's always been my favorite dinosaur. <clears throat> Makes perfect sense. Something else that was coming to me real quick before I end this video. So over the past several years, my um, I've noticed my allergies have intensified. There's certain uh, like certain food allergies and stuff have intensified. Allergies that I didn't have, uh, you know, ten years ago maybe even not seven years ago and I was reading that as we awaken right we are and things arise with in us our physical bodies illness illnesses right these shadows uh, these as we begin to purge things that no longer resonate with us and then allergies we're no longer able to tolerate certain foods because they are on a much lower uh, resonance a much lower vibrational frequency and I used to always think oh, yeah whatever it doesn't make any sense and now I'm realizing oh that makes sense this past week I have been uh, doing not a full juice fast but drinking um, it's been all vegetables and fruits 
and I feel much better. Yesterday, or I have felt much better. The respiratory issues have have subsided, and except, but yesterday, I what did I have yesterday? I had a vegan burrito. I still had my juices, but I had a vegan burrito. I had a I had two hash browns and then I had uh, had an ice cream yeah I know it's not the best diet I was doing a test yesterday um, because it had been a week and I had just been doing juice and like and vegetable salads and now I'm I today I'm congested so I think there there's something to that as well. So and the reason I thought about that is because this, I was talking about I was talking about the mushrooms here and the healing powers of it. So I firmly believe now that diet um, that diet what we're able to tolerate um, changes as we awake, not necessarily awaken because we awaken first and then we begin to ascend like uh, uh, increase our frequency. Uh, to ascend to, you know, higher uh, levels of awareness, states of consciousness, higher dimensions. So I firmly believe, based on my own experiences now, um, that diet does uh, play a huge part. And then when I saw the Reiki Master, or not Reiki Master, but I went for um, a Reiki session, but it's been like two, a month, month and a half now. Uh, she asked me if I was having issues with my digestive system. So definitely believe there are healing properties in food now and what we're able to tolerate will change as we begin to, uh, to ascend. And that's simply increasing our vibrational frequency, um, our resonance, okay? All right, so anyway, that is it for today's video. I know I get a little bit off track uh, from the actual document itself and that is on purpose because uh, anybody can read the document but I really wanted to share uh, some insight and correlations um, anything that comes through as I'm reading the document again because it is all part of the journey so thank you so much for joining me for today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one all right bye now Thank you.